The UN is urging the Libyan government to release people held behind bars without viable reason and deal with those implicated in tortures and kidnappings. A report has emerged claiming that armed groups, some of whom have government support, have been tortured and have been torturing and killing detainees. Leslie Morungo has this report. These scars tell of the violence many detainees in Libya face. The UN says Thousands of civilians are being held unlawfully, and imprisonment is the least of their worries. The levels of starvation we were subjected to are unimaginable. We didn't even have a piece of bread. They used to abuse us, taking us outside and whipping us again and again. At night, they would take one or two detainees and torture them. Killings take place daily. Every single day, people die and are buried. It's like a mass grave. According to the UN report, at least 37 people bearing signs of torture were admitted to Tripoli hospitals last year. Bodies of those kidnapped by armed groups have also been found on the streets and in rubbish dumps in Benghazi. The UN has evidence of the inhumane conditions at a prison partially run by the Libyan National Army. We currently are documenting cases of torture, uh, cases of ill treatment, deaths in custody, uh, summary, uh, summary killings. Uh, hostage taking and a range of other very serious human rights violations. For years, various armed groups have operated unchecked in Libya, with the ongoing political unrest only further empowering them. The UN is now urging authorities to implement the rule of law by releasing anyone held without reason and prosecuting those accused of torture, kidnapping and executions. Leslie Marungu, CGTN. Well, let's get you an update now. CGTN's Nick Harper joins me from New York. Nick, it's a very distressing report on the conditions in Libyan prisons. What can the UN do to address this issue? Very distressing indeed, the fact that armed groups essentially seem to be running these prisons and the government is allowing them to do so. The UN's options though on this are somewhat limited. As we heard in Leslie's report there, they are urging the rule of law and they're urging all of the de detainees uh, who are being unlawfully held to be released. But other options beyond that are somewhat limited. There's already an arms embargo in place on the country. It has been since 2011. The UN continues to renew that arms embargo when it comes up each year for renewal. That at least is an attempt to try and stop arms from going to those militant groups. But on top of that, it's also looking at ways to try and stabilize the country, looking ahead to elections that could be held before the end of the year, uh, asking for those to be free and fair and impartial elections and also calling for the adoption of a permanent national constitution but the UN is certainly worried we heard just last month um, from Gassame Salame the UN envoy for Libya he was briefing the UN Security Council and talked about these militant groups saying that there was a vicious cycle in the country with a poor economy a human uh, humanitarian situation and a lack of security in the country all of which were contributing to to this vicious cycle and allowing these armed groups to operate essentially with impunity. And Nick, what more can the international community do to help bring stability back to Libya? Well, the UN is very much calling on the international community to play their part, to try and get behind the United Nations, to try and push for these fair and credible elections, but also to try and get more backing for the UN-backed government that's in Tripoli. You have to bear in mind that there's still two rival governments trying to take control of Libya in two different cities. The UN-backed one in Tripoli clearly doesn't have control, so the United Nations is really urging the international community to get behind it, to give it more support. But this report about the prisons really just uh, highlighting once again the uh, terrible security situation that we have seen for many years, really since the fall of Muammar Gaddafi back in 2011. This uh, stability crisis that has really rocked the country and the fact that these military armed groups have been able to rise and they have been able to rise unchecked by any real uh, overall government oversight. Okay, Nick Harper there in New York. Thank you for that update on Libya.